introduction, Geetha. Um, so this is a quick start guide to Google Analytics, but we're also doing My Business and Search Console, which are some really neat features that uh, Google offers. Um, so as Geetha mentioned, we've, we've heard over and over again that uh, folks want to learn how to use Google Analytics, but uh, they're a little intimidated by the setup process. So what we're going to do is kind of go through these three tools that Google has fairly quickly. Um, again, this is all being recorded, so it's really not necessary to take notes. Um, what I'm trying to show here is the step-by-step -step process, just to kind of give you something in your brain so when you start going through these, uh, the set of processes, you'll be familiar with the pages. I've done all frame grabs on stuff, so it, it'll look, it should look very close or not exactly as you would see them as you go through the process. So let's go to the next one here. So first one is uh, Google Analytics. Why use Google Analytics? So this gives your gives you insights into what's happening on your website on a daily basis. So you, you can see a lot of information here. And as, as Geetha had mentioned before, we have some really good um, videos that have been put together on Matt Subcode that are just perfect for, for right after we go through this process. You want to jump over there and, and start taking a look at those videos. I think you'll be very uh, pleased with, with what he has. Uh, let's see. Let you see where your internet visitors are coming from. Um, again, referrals from other websites, from search engines, from social media, from your newsletters. It allows you to track that information and uh, record it. And what are they doing on your site? So are they going into your homepage? Are they going to individual pages? Where are they going? Where are they shopping? How are they converting? Um, this is a really neat feature. Is It allows you to compare week over week, month over month, year over year. You could set blocks of time, two months, over two months. Um, it's, it's a really, really powerful tool to let you compare, let's say, you know, 2017 to 2018 and see how you're improving. Real-time live traffic reports. This is a really cool feature they introduced a couple years ago. Let's say you have an author who has a link pointing to your website, and he's going to switch it on, put that link in place at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, this actually allows you to see live traffic coming into the site, where they're going, where they're coming from. It's, it's, it's pretty interesting to watch. Which visitors are converting to sales? So let's say you're doing a newsletter and you also have some social media going and you want to see how those compare in converting to online sales on your website. Google Analytics will allow you to do that. Um, again, as I mentioned before, is your newsletter driving sales? Is your social media driving sales? Is, are your in-store campaigns driving sales through your website? It'll allow you to do things like that. It works. It's free. All of these tools, all three tools I'm going to show you are free. And they're very, very powerful. So to get started with the Google Analytics setup, um, you can go to analytics.google.com. I'm going to walk you through the process. You don't have to go there now. Um, once you are logged into Google Analytics, detailed instructions are available on the book web site. So pretty much everything I'm going through now is available at this URL. Um, you'll be able to get the slideshow later if you want links pointing to it so you can go through it. Um, so here we go. All right. So if you go to uh, Google Analytics, uh, that URL that was pointed to earlier, it's going to do one of two things. It's prompt you for a login, and um, if it doesn't recognize you, if you are already have an account with Google, it's going to automatically log you in, and you'll see a page similar to this. Probably not what's on the right-hand side since you don't have a, a Google account yet. So you're going to, if it prompts you to set up an account, just go through the setup process, and it's going to jump you back to this page anyway. So at some point, either you already have a Google account, or you're going to set it up a Google account. So once you have that Google account in place, Google system is going to recognize who you are and pop up these pages, um, unless you have cookies turned off. So the first thing you're going to do is go down to the bottom left-hand corner where it says admin. You're going to click on the admin link. It's going to take you to this page. You're going to click on create property. And then when it bounces you into create property, 
your options are website is the one you want. You don't want to, you're not doing a mobile app, you're doing a website. Um, website name is going to be the name of your bookstore. And then the website URL, the URL you are using for people to find your website, you're going to put it in this location. Um, this is a test site that I'm, that I'm using. Um, industry category, they've got this great category. It's called books and literature, which seems to apply to everyone that we work with. So that's the one you want. Uh, United States, I have Eastern Standard Time, and then I click on Get Tracking ID. So when you get to this page, you're going to have a number of options that are given to you for website tracking. Um, ignore everything below. All you want is that tracking ID number, that UA-4888. Not this one specifically. You're going to have your own, but that that's the number that you want to record. You probably want to copy. You can write it down. You can you know, copy it and hold it in your uh, browser, whatever, not a big deal. All right, next one. Okay, by default, Google Analytics does not include e-commerce tracking. So they, they, they want you to set it up separately from this initial setup that you're doing. So this will take you through the e-commerce tracking. It's very, very, very easy. So you're gonna sign into Google Analytics, which you've already done. You're going to click on that admin button down in the lower left corner that I showed you before. And in the view column, you're going to click e-commerce settings. I'm going to show you this in more detail in just a minute. You set enable e-commerce to on, and you click submit. That easy. Here's what it looks like. So this is that admin. After you clicked on the admin page, this is what the admin page looks like. In that right column, you'll see the red arrow. It's pointing to e-commerce settings. You want to make sure that in that middle column, it's set to your store name in the property setting. And here's what it's going to take you. You're going to set the enable e-commerce to on. You're going to leave the other two options off. And you select save. You're done. Now that you have the Google Analytics tracking code, you need to insert it into your website, your Indie Commerce or Indie Light website. This only needs to be done once. So you're going to go log in to your website. You're going to go to configuration, web services, analytics services, and add. And the page is going to look just like this. So this is the analytics service page. You're going to take the tracking code that you recorded before, and you're going to drop it into tracking ID and click save. And this is the confirmation page. You're done. It's going to see down there where it says title store. You see store and storage normal, and it says edit. You're ready to go. All right. The next two we have is Google My Business. And this is the result that you see when you're in Google. This is a community bookstore in Brooklyn. Um, this, is, this is what you're building is that little block on the right-hand side with the pictures, um, the store hours, uh, all this other information is collected as you're registering for uh, Google My Business. Um, one key thing to note here, get some nice pictures in here almost immediately when you start going through this process. Get the front of your store, maybe some nice interiors, things like that, just load them up in here. It makes a big difference if people see a nice little picture when they come in here. Back, all right, here's the Google My Business setup. Very, very simple. Why is Google My Business? It drives local customers to your bookshop when they want to find information about your business. So a lot of times what's happening is on mobile devices, people are walking around, they're looking for a bookshop, they type into their search thing, bookshop, and you're going to have a nice little picture that's going to pop up there. It might be your store if you're using Google My Business. So that's a big, big reason why you want to optimize for Google My Business. Make sure that you have this registered. Google My Business results are prominently displayed in search results and in Google Maps, as, as I said. Especially on mobile devices, it makes a big, big difference. A Google My Business profile that is up to date and accurate provides customers with a good first impression of your business. So you want to have you're going to have the option here to set up store hours. Um, again, the pictures, new pictures that are coming up there from things that are happening. Um, your hours is, is a big deal. Uh, feedback, um, questions. These are all things that you can respond to when customers are posting this information into your Google My Business account from the search results. Um, you want to keep that stuff updated and clean and respond to um, questions from people. 
Online reviews of business are also displayed in your Google My Business profile. Customer, customers value reviews when deciding when to make a purchase. So always, if, if there's a negative review in your Google My Business thing, you have the option to go in there and respond to it. Just respond openly and honestly, and people respect that. Your Google My Business profile will drive traffic to your business. And without question, we're seeing this more and more, is that people are on these mobile devices, and when they're looking around for a bookstore or shopping, they're using that, that mobile device to find things, and it's, it really shows up well on your mobile devices. Again, it's free. So this is the URL you would go to to start the registration process for Google My Business. It's going to look something like this. Um, that Start button probably appears over to the right-hand side a little bit. This is a, shrunk down a little bit for a tablet. So you're going to click on Start Now. It's going to promptly ask you it's, it's, uh, what the name of your business is, or it's going to prompt you to set up an account with Google. Either way, you're going to end up on a page like this after you've set up the account. Click Next. It's going to start prompting you, going through the whole process of gathering information about your business. And it goes through several pages. Um, and you're going to end up here on verify connection to this business um, after you've inputted all the other pages that they want. I kind of jumped ahead here, but it's very, very intuitive. You shouldn't have any problems with it at all. Um, all right, click on continue. Here's um, a couple options for you. The last step in the verific verification process, you can either have Google send you a text message or snail mail you a postcard with your verification code. In this case, I requested a card that will take about five to seven days to arrive. Once the verification is complete, you can start loading photos and updating your Google My Business listing. Keep it fresh with photos and seasonal store hours. Monitor reviews and questions on a regular basis. Keep that stuff updated. I can't emphasize that enough. But again, it's a very simple process. Um, if you haven't done this, as soon as you get off this, this webinar, jump on in and take, take a look at it. Next one is Google Search Console. This is a very cool product that hardly that many people are using, and I, and I don't understand why it, it does so much. Um, why use Google Search Console? It lets you find out what search terms people are using to find your website on Google. So whatever they're using, whatever term they're using, and they click on it, Google records what they've, what term they've used and puts it into reports for you so you can start to see how people are finding your website. It monitors how your website is moving up and down in search results over time. So let's say you start adding a few extra keywords into some of the descriptions for the events that you're having at your store. Um, it's going to allow you to see if that's working and driving more traffic to those events. It monitors how Google updates are affecting your organic rank in search results. So organic rank is just where you're showing up in search results. You're, these are unpaid um, listings for you in Google. And as Google changes their algorithm, which they always do, um, it allows you to monitor what's going on there. Are you being up, pushed up or down for certain keywords that are important to your business? It monitors your website for errors and reports them to you. So Google goes through and they index your website, and then they, um, if they run across any errors, they will show up in an error report in Google Search Console. So anytime Google Search touches your website, that's what Search Console is about. It allows you to see how Google Search is interacting or driving customers to your website. It allows you to compare the performance of keywords and terms over different time periods. So like we saw with Google Analytics, you can take blocks of time and compare them against each other and see how you're going up and down where you might need to add more keywords or you know, be surprised by keywords that people are using to find your site. It's, it's pretty interesting stuff once you, once you get in there. Again, it's free. So you would go to google.com slash webmasters for the setup to begin. Um, once you get in there, you'll see in the background on this, there's a pop-up here, but it's going to, on the upper right-hand corner, you'll see Add a Property. You're going to click on the Add a Property button, and this pop-up will appear, which will say Add a Property. In this case, this is a, a test website that I, I'm using. I put in the URL and click Add. Now, it wants to confirm that you indeed own this property. 
So it's going to give you some code. So by default, it's going to go to recommended method for, for doing this. We don't want recommended method. You want to click on alternate methods. As soon as you click on alternate methods, it's going to show up with this page. You're going to go down to the second option on alternate methods, which is HTML tag. You're going to click on that, and then you're going to copy this string that you're seeing here, this meta tag string, um, and you're just going to keep it for the time being. You're not going to click on verify. So this page is going to exist. You're going to open up a new browser at this point. So you're going to press Control N on your keyboard. A new browser is going to open up, and you're going to go to your website. So verifying website for Google search groups went too far here. Um, so anyway, during the verification process requires that you take that string and you're going to drop it into your web page. So uh, on, into your website. So you're going to go to configurations. You're going to log into your website. Go to configurations, search and metadata, verifications, and then add verification. And the page that opens up will look just like this. In the search, where it says search engine, there's a drop down box there. You're going to select Google. And they're going to click on next. And that's going to take you to the verifications page. Now, that metadata, meta tag string that you had copied before, you're going to paste it here, which says ver verification meta tag, dropping it right in there. And then you're going to click save. So now the HTML tag is on your website. You need to reopen the window on Search Console where you got the tag from and click on the Verify button. So you had left that browser open before. You'd gone to your website. You'd put in the tag, and now you're going back to that page, and you're clicking on Verify. Google would then verify the tag has been inserted on your site, and you should then see a confirmation page. Search Console would then begin gathering data from for your site. Now. It's not suddenly going to show information. It needs time to, to start gathering information. You'll start, to, you'll start to see it populate over the next few days. You'll, you'll see more and more stuff start to happen. So don't be surprised when you go back to Search Console and don't see any data right away. It's going to take a few days for it to happen. And here are some helpful videos and webinars that uh, Keith had mentioned earlier. So we've got a really good Google Analytics Video again. These are uh, Matt Subco had done these, and then a Google Analytics for e-commerce, and then also um, we have three videos that are split up on doing local search optimization. And that's it. Very simple, very easy. This shouldn't take you more than three to five minutes for each site, and these are all really, really powerful tools. Once you have them in place, and you've got questions about how to work with them. Just contact us at staff at bookweb.org and uh, we'll help you out. Keep up. Yeah, uh, thank you, Phil. Uh, that was definitely a very useful quick start guide uh, for anyone to get started with these uh, three tools. And would you say that like, if they had to go back and then maybe spend 15 minutes, they should be all set with these three tools?